So let's begin with the story. Once upon a time, long time ago, there was a hunter. And it's the end of the day and he's feeling a little bit like you do sometimes. He's tired. His boots are wet and he's coming back to his little hut. He sees something that really frightens him. He sees a trail of blue smoke coming from the hut. Someone's in there. As he comes to the door and he, he peers in, this is what he sees. He sees that someone has prepared him a meal. He sees that someone has bothered to get his raggedy pile of clothes washed and a little bit sewn up. No one's ever been kind to him before. That's the important thing. No one's been kind like that. All week this goes on. Till finally on Friday, and I think you would have done this a little earlier than him, he comes home early. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? He comes up to the door, peers in, and this is what he sees. There's a woman in the hut. Her back is turned to him, and she's cooking. And as she's cooking, she's singing in some old language that it is difficult for us to even think about anymore. Old words. And as he looks at her, and he can see she has a river of dark red hair down her back, he knows in the way that hunters know that this is fox woman dreaming. This woman is part fox, part woman, and part spirit of the forest. She knows in the way that all women know when you're being watched. So she just turns absolutely unaffected by the whole thing and she says this, I will be the woman of this hut. Very flamenco. <laughs> I will be the woman of this hut. And the hunter looks at her and he recognizes a good thing when he sees it and he says, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very sweet night they had that night. You, you know, we've all had a few nights like this where there's a little candle in it, an old bottle, empty bottle of wine, and the food is good. Turns out she knows a lot of jokes. Turns out she knows a lot of songs. Turns out he knows a few stories. And slowly, between them, love is wrapping its swan feather cloak around them. We're all a little jealous to this day. But you've got to know that all fox women have a pelt. You all have pelts. And the way she dealt with her pelt was this. She hung it on the back of the door. It was just there glittering that deep red, like little sparks of fire coming from it. And some of you will know, if you've ever been close to a fox, that their pelt gives off quite a strong scent, a wild, regal scent, let's call it, but it's strong. And as the weeks turn into months, and she's living in the hut, that pelt really starts to give off its scent. It gets into the mind of the hunter. It gets into the clothes of the hunter. It gets into everything. Till one night, he's sitting down there at the table again, and there's the little candle, the whole scene, and he says something like this. Bright pulse of my whole understanding, sky woman of the dawn, blossoming branch, you are whiter than the swan on the pool, you are more tuneful than the fiddle. When I met you, I thought the moon herself had fallen out of the sky into a bed of wild flowers and was singing an old tune I had waited my whole life to hear. But there's just this one thing. <laughs> There's just this one thing, it's the pelt. <laughs> it's awfully strong. Now, I'm not saying burn the pelt. I'm not saying the pelt is bad. But in a little domestic situation like this, it's overwhelming. Would you consider just taking your pelt somewhere else, hang it off a tree, hang it outside, but move it out of our little love den? And she looked at him like you looked at him with that disappointment. Mm. And she thought, well, maybe it's a phase and said nothing. Didn't move the pelt. Goes on. 
Now he's, it deset, it's all he can smell is the pelt. Until one night at dinner, maybe he's had a little bit too much wine and the charm has left his language and the goodness has left his heart and he just slams his fist down on the table and he says, listen, I told you once already, get rid of the pelt. And in the morning when he woke up, the fox woman was gone, the pelt was gone, and the scent was gone. And they say and say truly, to this day, the hunter stands lonely in his whole body at the entrance of the hut for the scent of the fox woman. Lonely in his whole body for the scent of the fox woman. That's the story. This tiny little five minute story that is as deep as Shakespeare, isn't it? Little story that you could tell, you could tell it to your daughters, you could tell it to your sons, you could tell it to your parents. It's got a lot of wallop. Somewhere in history, we've done that. Somewhere in history, we have exiled the fox woman. And I say in my language, as truthfully as I can, that the MA in myth and ecology is nothing more than an attempt to sing across the snow to the fox woman. That's truly what it is.